Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Hottie Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. And if you're old friends and family to the YouTube channel, welcome back. There is a lot, a lot of information that I need to share with you guys. A lot of energy that you are going to be watching switching into almost extreme mode. But one thing that you can always count on me, I'm always going to give you the facts, number one. I'm always going to keep it real, number two. And number three, I'm going to give you the tools to work with these energies so that you don't feel like you're being used and abused by them. Because as I'm looking at the chart, there is a really strong feeling that can be brought up from these planets as they're shifting and moving. From Pluto retrograde, Mercury retrograde, and the fact that we are now navigating through Taurus season, the sun is currently transiting through the sign of Taurus, and Uranus, the planet of unexpected developments and surprises, is doing damage, beautiful damage though, in that sign. So there's a lot of shifts that are happening. So if you would, please grab a coffee or some tea, light a candle, a blanket, get cozy, and join me in just a few seconds as we dive into what we can expect for the week ahead. Talk to you shortly. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel featuring Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the transits, all of what it is that you can expect for the week ahead starting May 1st until May 7th. Now, let's dive in. So like I said in the very beginning of this video, it's very important that I start off by saying the fact that Mercury is now currently retrograde. Mercury rules communication and contracts. Also, it works the tiny little mechanisms that allow our machines and our technology to work. And when Mercury goes retrograde, the energy that that planet rules will start to go inside. It will retrieve its information retrieve its energy and information or things that would be beneficial to us as far as communication or things working as they should, they start to break down. So during this time from now, especially May 1st until May 14th, you are going to see little ebbs and flows when it comes to communication. And don't be surprised if you see parts around you, for example, cars or tools, your phone, those types of things kind of breaking down. For me personally, I've had to begin to think about replacing my washer, which makes so much sense. It was here when I bought my house and now I'm sure it served its purpose. It served its life. It did pretty well. But now during Merc Mercury retrograde, this is the planet saying now is a great time for you to replace this machine because it's not working the way that it should. Of course, I've already freed up my schedule and freed up my calendar to make room for extra space for these things to kind of break down. So that's how I'm going to be using one of the many ways that I'm going to be using Mercury retrograde is to replace that major appliance within my life so that I don't have any further complications. I say that to say, or I'm sharing that with you guys as giving myself as an example to you that there are certain things that will break down during this, this time, during this transit. And instead of getting frustrated and being like, oh my God, I'm so annoyed. How could this work against me? We want to make sure that we are giving ourselves additional space to factor in for the things that are inevitably going to break down during this time. So I'm really curious to hear if you've had any malfunctions, if you've had any uh, trips to the car mechanic, if there are certain things around you that you are considering, for example, are you thinking about getting an upgrade on your phone? Is there certain technologies or tools for information sharing that you are thinking about upgrading or changing, or maybe you've lost in some way? Have you been losing your keys? Have you need to purchase little finder, key finder things? I've also shared that on my Instagram, little tools to help you navigate through Mercury retrograde season. So if you want, you can check the link down below in my Amazon storefront. I've shared a lot of things that is that I use and incorporate during this time. And it does doesn't give me any headache or complications. I actually enjoy Mercury retrograde for that reason because it's a time for me to revamp, to reorganize, to reschedule, to fix so that when this planet starts to move direct, again May 14th, things are flowing smoothly and I'll look around me and be like, 
I'm actually happy that I needed to invest in this. This was a priority for me and now my life is going to be flowing more easily and effortlessly than it was before. If it wasn't for that retrograde cycle, I might have accepted these terms and conditions, but now that I've had the chance to look back, I'm realizing that maybe there is something else that would have been beneficial for, for me and you know, it ended up being a blessing. So that's one way, wonderful way to use this, this time, this season of Mercury retrograde. However, of course, it can create a little bit of complications and some headaches that you're gonna have to almost accept, you know, kind of embrace that energy, right? The other thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about during Mercury retrograde season is the fact that miscommunication is something that should be 1000% factored in. You might need to consider the fact that what you're hearing other people saying or what you're saying to other people might not be heard or understood in full. So now is a great time to ask for clarification. So that's one way to use this transit is to make sure that you are incorporating stronger tools for communication. When we talk to each other, do we really understand each other? Am I really hearing you? Am I missing the mark? Also, another way to work with this transit is to have difficult conversations with people that you might have slept swept under the rug or you might be sleeping on. So there might be difficult conversations or things that have been like the elephant in the room. How do we address this? How do we talk about this? Mercury retrograde is the invitation from this planet to be like, listen, this might not be the easiest conversation, but it's a conversation that is essential for us to have. The other thing that I think that I would love to encourage you with during this transit is a change in your perspective and your vision with certain things. I believe, especially right now in our astrological times, there's so much change and so much shift. And with that, we are required to evolve very, very quickly. And as we're evolving, it is inevitable that your mind is going to change because you yourself have changed. Mercury retrograde is a wonderful time to do a little self-assessment and ask yourself the decisions, the commitments, the thoughts, the perspectives that I've already had, do they still serve me in a great way or do I need to pivot as needed because again, as I evolved, my mind and what I want for myself has also shape shift in some really interesting way. And having said that, what will be the punish what is the punishment the punishment or the penalties that are a result from you changing your mind if there are any at all and are you okay and comfortable with facing those things so these planets again mercury retrograde you can always expect some changing of the mind and some fluctuation but because Uranus, the planet of surprise, unexpected developments, but also freedom, is transiting through the sign of Taurus, which rules our safe space, which rules the things that it is that we value the most, it can trigger, or not it can, it will trigger those same type of energies of saying like, when I change my mind so that, because I've learned that this is who I am right now, or this is what I want, or this is what I require, is it going to threaten someone else's, um, I don't want to say their connection to you. So is it going to threaten what they expect of you or what the world expects of you, especially now that you're spending, taking this time to reevaluate, to reassess yourself and what freedom looks like for you. This is again, so much easier said than done. <laughs> so much easier said than done because there are a lot of, difficult conversations and different d difficult ways of like adjusting to things that is not easy and I say all of this and I want to empower you to feel supported by these planets because they're the ones who are aiding you through it and guiding you through it but I also want to say that even when you know that you're making the right choice and decision even when you're working with these planets and you're listening to their advice and you're following in their footsteps and you're honoring what they are guiding you through, it is not always easy. And if I can tell you anything right now, in my own experience, sometimes doing the right thing for me is not an easy decision, even though I know that it's the right thing for me. Going the way that is right for you is not always going to be a walk in the park. 
to, to say it mildly. It can be a huge, huge upheaval. It can break down relationships. It can break down your trust. It can create certain obstacles and challenges that you might not feel prepared for. But these are changes that don't need to happen overnight. There's things that take, they can take time. The next retrograde that I want to talk to you guys about is Pluto retrograde. And this transit is hugely transformative. And this is because Pluto itself rules the energy of transformation, major adjustment, and Pluto essentially wipes the slate clean in, a, in certain or certain areas in our lives that have been antiquated, that are outgrown, or that are abusive in some way that the planets can see as significant to us. These planets are not trying to hurt us. They're actually working to protect us. But in that process, if our brains are looking for a sense of security or stability and something that is changing, it can feel like an immediate threat to our safety or our identity or whatever the case is. I want to say that first because Pluto can really trigger in some deep-seated fears because Pluto rules our subconscious. It rules the dark. It rules the shadow. Things that we don't usually go looking for, energies that we don't typically incorporate in our day-to-day -day experience, especially in most societies. It can be really tough conversations to have, difficult, complex feelings that get brought up, and things that I promise you, if you're watching this channel right now and tuning in, you are someone who has been working on self-healing, self-assessment, growth, breaking generational curses, incorporating the, the lessons of the past, of your ancestors, your guides, your spiritual path and your progress, the strengths of that and the weaknesses, you're incorporating that and becoming a better person. And this is a transit that goes on for years. So to have to revisit it when you think or let me take a step back, to have to revisit this same chapter in your life that you have felt like you've closed that chapter and you've moved on and you've learned and you've grown, it can be really tough. It can be very triggering and it can be also very exhausting because you can say to me, Jess, and I know I'm going to get those comments, I know I'm going to get those emails, I know I'm going to see it, Jess, I have to go through this again, relive this again, how, why, I thought, I thought we were done. And I want to remind you that a few months ago, I told you that now that Pluto is currently transiting through the sign of Aquarius, on this day, May 1st, it will go retrograde and it's going to retrace its steps out of Aquarius and go back into the sign of Capricorn. And that's where you're going to have to kind of relive sort of some of these energies. So enjoy it while you can, but also keep it on your radar that this day we are going to have to go through these energies again. We're gonna have to go through the motions again, but we're gonna go through it together. And today, that day, that day arrived. So what is the way to work with these energies? Well, number one, I think the best thing is to realize that there's certain things that is that you can control, and there's certain things that you have to let go of, your, your sense of control. Why? Because Pluto rules the energy of control. It's our ability to insert ourselves into things so that things can play out in the way that we think that it is beneficial to us or society as a whole, our business, our children, whatever the case is. Pluto, though, is saying that there are certain things that we can't control. And in that process, how do you cope? When it comes to certain baggages, relationships, connections, there are certain things that are going to resurface back into your life, reemerge, certain things that you would probably at this point be like, I do not want to go through this again. But the planet sees that there is something beneficial here for you and there's an opportunity for you to reassess and to reclaim, to own your power and to show up in a way that demonstrates what you have learned thus far. I'm going to use myself as an example. So Pluto naturally rules my fifth house within my natal chart. So these energies continue to show themselves wherever there's a Pluto transit. And even though Pluto is currently transiting the sign of Aquarius, but now retrograding back into the sign of Capricorn, those energies where Pluto falls within my natal chart, it will make me kind of like reassess those energies. Now the fifth house rules children, creation, what we 
what we share to the world, our con not our contribution, but what we love to share to the world or what we feel called, also our ability to play. For me personally, I am so obsessed and which is also Pluto energy, I'm so obsessed and so enamored and so not controlled, but strung by astrology. There is never going to be a part of my life that I'm not going to incorporate astrology into it because Pluto is, it has a hold on me. And I have turned that inevitably into my business, into, I've turned a hobby into my way of life and something that I share with others. But I've also had to learn for myself in order for me to continue to love this and continue to feel authentic within it without compromising anything, especially as the world around me is actively changing, especially social media. There are certain things and certain boundaries that I've had to incorporate. So I promise you during the Pluto retrograde or the transit from Aquarius back into the sign of Capricorn, I'm going to have to reassess my business. I'm going to re have to reassess my boundaries and reassess how I show up for the world and give myself permission to continue to show up in a way that is authentic, that is moving with integrity and also incorporating the lessons that I've struggled with in the last few years. So that is an example for me. Also, putting myself on the forefront and using myself as an example, Pluto has transited my seventh house of relationships. Relationships of people that I would might consider marrying. And now that I that transit is over, but now that it's retrograde, those same themes that I've already learned are, are now, I'm gonna have to retrace and relive them, especially probably in my current relationship. And instead of me looking at it and saying, when they start to surface again, especially boundaries or connection or intimacy, when they start to surface again, instead of me getting frustrated and looking at the relationship and maybe even wanting to toss it out or be triggered, I could then, from a place of empowerment, know that I can't control the, the circumstances around me, but there are certain lessons, lessons that I've already learned that are in my power and that I can show up in a way, again, authenticity, integrity, honest communication, and, and expectations so that it's beneficial to my relationship and my relationship can continue to thrive with a person that I ultimately can see myself living with for the rest of my life. And I say that to say that, again, Pluto's transit is going through my seventh house, well, into my eighth and now going back to my seventh house. So these are trends that I can see. Now, I put myself on the table now, it's your turn. Well, you don't have to, but it's your turn. Where is this Pluto transit happening for you? Again, it was in the sign of Aquarius. What does Aquarius rule within your chart? What house? And now that it's transiting back into the sign of Capricorn, what house is it now going through? And what have been those trans, uh, transits looking like for you? There is so much that I've just talked about, so much, but is that the end? No. No, 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 not at all. At the very end of the week, the 5th, on the 5th, we have the Scorpio full moon eclipse. Yo, that part. Okay, we are in eclipse season. <laughs> and not only are we in eclipse season, but we're working with the Mercury retrograde. And we're also now working with Pluto retrograde. So a lot of shit is going to be hitting the fan. And in this case, instead of us being like, oh my God, it's cloudy with the chance of meatballs out there. There's meatballs falling from the sky. This is where you get your pots and your pans and you go outside and you're like, I love meatballs. I love spaghetti. And you just catch the opportunities that are raining down. So it does look chaotic. We're going to see that in the transits. We're going to see that in the news because of these transits. But also in your intimate life, guys, Scorpio is ruled by the energy of Pluto and also Mars. And they're co-ruled. So as the full moon eclipse is happening in the sign of Scorpio, again on the 5th, these are again, these certain, tr not only is this, this full moon going to be bringing up a lot of energy and highlighting it in your face, but it's bringing up a lot of issues of the past. So go ahead and plan for that. Do not be afraid. For some of you guys, you guys are like, oh my God, just holy shit. And I know, let's just hold hands collectively and just be like, yo, we're all in this together. Let's talk about our experiences, but not, let's not be threatened by them. The Scorpio full moon eclipse is going to bring a lot up to the surface, but I want you to be open to what the, the universe is saying. Pay attention to this. This is something that is being transformed around you. The slate is being wiped clean. This is not a threat to you. This is going to 
charge up the energy so that you can have greater depths of intimacy and connection, not only with others or with the world, but ultimately with yourself. And it's going to help empower you so that you don't get knocked down by the circumstances and feel powerless. Also, this is going to bring into your life things that actually matter to you. So watch as certain things get erased. Everything that's getting erased or wiped out from your perspective, it didn't have the potential for the long haul and it will be replaced because Pluto is very much about regeneration and has depth to it and connection. And there are certain obsessions and certain ties that you are going to have to let go of. And the eclipse, the Scorpio full moon, and Scorpio actually rules our ability to release, to let go, so that something better can absolutely come through. And I know it can be so cliche, but it's the truth. Any time when we're being called to release, there is an act of surrender and freedom that comes from, thank God I was able to let that go because I know there has to be something better out there for me. So there are certain connections and dynamics that need to be completely expelled from your life. But the same time that they're being let go of, they're, they're coming back, not in the same way, but in a different space that is going to be a reflection of the person that is that you are now. For that reason, I celebrate it. I will have a video about the full moon eclipse coming up shortly after, so please make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. Also, I want to invite you to sign up for Bahati Love Notes, which is where I shuffle and pull cards for that group daily. It has been very beneficial to everyone who has participated. It's been an honor. It's been very good for me as well. I shuffle and pull for you from my altar, so you guys already know those energies have been very, very powerful potent and initiating major change for everybody in a good way in a good way so also it helps to explain where we're at every single day so you're never going to go through this alone um also it, you can also use it for like uh journal prompts which i've started hearing that many of you guys have been using those readings for what comes up for you as a way to better understand yourself better understand your power journaling and you know self-healing and you know, just empowerment across the board. It's a blessing. So I will link that down for you guys down below. Thank you so much again for hanging out with me. Sorry this video is short, but I've realized that most of you guys don't like long drawn out things. And if you do, you can tune in to my lives on Monday. I go live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we go into all the transits and we connect and we vibe. It's more intimate and has a lot more depth. But in the meantime, I hope that this served you. I hope that it makes sense. And if you have any questions or anything like that, just leave a comment down below. And if you need me, you can find me at bahadilife.com, working my magic. Until then, I'm sending you guys all of my love, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.